In the previous section, we introduced the concept of computational thinking and how computational thinking could address some of the challenges that students have in learning rigid body dynamics. So let's go to MATLAB now and have a look at our very first case study example, the spring mass damper. So what I'm opening up for you right now is an example of a live script. So just before we sort of uh, start spending a lot of time staring at this example, let me just bring to your attention um, the choices that you now have. Um, for those of you that are already familiar with MATLAB, you're probably using MATLAB to, to write scripts. And look, I'll refer to that as, as the, the classic script, uh, the classic editor. And, and that sort of classic script authoring is still available in MATLAB. Absolutely it is. But in addition to that, you now also have another choice. And that is uh, the creation of these things called live scripts. And you use the live editor to create these live scripts. So let me sort of um, guide you through an example of a live script um, using this spring mass damper as, as, as the, the backdrop. What's really neat about these live scripts is it's not immediately obvious that it is a MATLAB script. And the reason for that is you have a much richer canvas now for describing um, the background story behind the topic that you want to talk to your students about. So as you're sort of staring at, at, the, at the screen right now, you can see we've got you know, a graphic that sort of shows the, the, the machine that we're going to focus on. Um, we've got a little bit of the, the sort of fundamental mathematics um, that uh, is, is being signposted. And if I just sort of zoom in here, um, this six step process, this is, these are the six steps that together we're going to go through. So we're going to define some model parameters. We're going to um, apply, discuss some of the governing physics for this machine. And then we're going to apply the, the Lagrangian technique for deriving the equations of motion for the machine. Once we've got that mathematical description, um, we'll take it and we will use those derived um, maths within a simulation. So that's, that's what we're going to do. So as I sort of scroll down the live script, um, we finally come across you know, one of the, the regions of the script where I can actually run MATLAB code. And in this sort of step one, you're seeing that we're defining some parameters for, for the machine. In this case, the mass, the stiffness, the damping. In step two, well, this is where hopefully uh, we want to spend a lot of our time thinking. And that is, you know, what is the governing physics um, that sort of uh, is applied to this, this machine. And for this machine, it's, it's about um, uh, being able to define the velocity of the mass, just the derivative of the position, um, calculating the kinetic and potential energies of the, of the system, and then combining those energy terms to form uh, what is the Lagrangian. And you can sort of see uh, on the output panel over here that we're echoing variables. And because these are symbolic things that we've been creating and that we'll soon be manipulating, note the nice mathematical markup that is, is appearing in the output. Yeah? Now, just before we get to step three, which is you know, applying that, that Lagrangian technique, let me sort of um, draw your focus to one of the tedium buster concepts. So the background here is let's assume that your students have already gone through a whole bunch of calculus classes and they've earned the merit badge for mastering the derivative chain rule. So let's just make that assumption, okay? So given that they've earned, they, they know how to compute derivatives, well, we now have some, some software, some, some um, MATLAB functions that allow students to define symbolic expressions and then to compute the derivative of those expressions. And one of the workhorses in MATLAB for doing that is a function called diff. As you can sort of see um, uh, in, in the output panel, uh, if I define this very familiar looking function, uh, the sine of z squared, and I ask for the derivative of it with respect to t, then it's gone away and it's applied the very familiar um, derivative chain rule to calculate the derivative. All right, bottom line on top, if we create symbolic expressions, no matter how small or big, we can use the diff function 
to calculate derivatives. And this is going to be really important. So the significance of that last section is, well, look, when we focus on the Lagrangian equation, you'll see that it includes the application of that derivative chain rule three times. And this is what I'm going to um, loosely refer to as our three-step dance. Here's the application of diff once, twice, and then three times. All right. So let's, let's get MATLAB to perform these derivative computations. Let's see what pops out. So what pops out over here on, on the right hand side is um, you know one piece of our overall equation of motion. All right? Now the other piece of our equation of motion comes from calculating uh, these things called generalized forces, you know, a topic that gets discussed in class. So this is the concept. How do we actually implement that concept? Well, here's a little bit of MATLAB code. All right, so let me just sort of um, circle this. So what's really interesting about the, the code fragment that I've circled for you is that when you stare at it, all right, if, if you were none the wiser, you'd think, look, this is just standard MATLAB for manipulating numeric things. I've got vectors, um, I'm doing sums, I'm doing dot products. Yep, I'm just manipulating numeric things. But you and I both know that uh, in this example, we're manipulating symbolic things. So the takeaway is MATLAB provides you with that sort of unified technical computing environment. It's the same language for doing numeric things, and it's the same language for doing symbolic things. And that's got to be really reassuring, right, from a student's perspective, that this one syntax, this one language, allows them to, to do both numeric and symbolic computing. All right, so let's sort of run this code fragment. And out pops the other bit of our equation of motion. And when we sort of pull those things together now, if I just sort of zoom in, here it is. Very, very familiar looking expression, the good old uh, equation of motion for our spring mass damper. Now, although we could, in this particular case, it's, it's fairly easy for us to do some um, manipulation to sort of isolate that uh, acceleration term, it's nice to know that when things do start to get a little bit bigger, that um, we've got another one of those tedium busters. And that's what I'm going to use here, this thing called solve. So using the solve function, I can specify a term of interest. In this case, it's x double dot. And I just want to um, get solve to do the uh, rearrangement so that we've got this isolated acceleration term all on its own. So let's just run that. And out it pops. So here it is. So this is our very familiar looking uh, term for our system acceleration. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to sort of take this derived equation of motion, uh, our derived expression for acceleration, and we're going to convert it into a MATLAB function, or more specifically, a MATLAB function block. So another example of a tedium buster is that automatic expression conversion step. So I'm just going to run that for you right now. So just let me run this section. There it is. <sighs> Gee, it keeps jumping around, doesn't it? Let me try that one more time. And there it is. So in just a second, uh, there it is. <laughs> what we've what we've done is we've just automated the process of converting our expression for acceleration into this little yellow block. Now before I dive into the into the internals of this little yellow block, let's just have a look at the, the sort of input output sort of um, interface. So the output of the little yellow block is our expression, it uh, is a signal x double dot, so our acceleration signal. On the input side, we would expect some of these uh, inputs to be time varying, you know, our external stimulus force, uh, the position of the mass, the velocity of the mass. Whereas other inputs to the system um, may be uh, constants, things like the mass, the damping, and the stiffness. So that's the, the I.O., the input and output interface. What about the internals? What's, what's inside this little yellow block? Well, let me double click on it and show you. Bada bing, bada boom, it's nothing more than the expression that we looked at 30 seconds ago for our uh, mass acceleration, our x double dot. Yeah? And this
and this was automatically created for us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take this derived expression, uh, the mathematics of the system, and we're going to use it um, within a simulation to sort of gain some further insights. So here's a Simulink model that at its very center contains the little yellow block that we previously derived. And if I just spend a moment, you'll see that uh, we take the acceleration signal coming out of the little yellow block and we integrate it twice. First time converts acceleration to velocity, and then the second time converts velocity into position. And associated with each of these integration actions, you'll see the corresponding uh, setting of the initial condition, the initial velocity, the initial position. All right, um, one other thing I'd like to sort of draw to your attention is the input stimulus force that we're going to excite the system with is going to be a good old step input. All right, so that's the model. We have our math in the model. Now let's numerically solve this by performing a numerical simulation. So let me run, run the simulation right now. So on the left hand side of the system, of the screen, you can see our external stimulus force. It's, it's this red step function. And you'll see that the step occurs at around about five seconds into the simulation. On the right hand side, you'll see another time trace that shows the position of the mass. And you'll see that for the, for the first couple of seconds, the system is, is uh, settling from its, from its initial state, right? And it settles down to its equilibrium position, and then bang, we hit it at five seconds with that step input, and then it starts to sort of respond with that classic sort of uh, overshoot response. All right. So, so let's explore the role that damping has um, in, in the dynamics of, of this machine. So I'm just going to um, focus on this, this little gauge, uh, sorry, this dial. And I'm going to dial in an increased value for damping. All right. Now let's rerun the simulation and see what, what impact damping has. And when you stare at the, the um, position time trace, you can see that that, that overshoot um, transient response, it's sort of been damped out. All right. So classic second order response. So there you have it. We derived the math of the system. We included the, the um, derived mathematics into a simulation environment. And then we're able to sort of uh, explore further concepts by doing simulation. Now, just before I sort of wrap up, I just want to take a very, very brief detour into MATLAB's supporting help browser. Because as you can imagine, from a student's perspective, um, you know, when they're, they're needing help and they're wanting a little bit of guidance um, in, in using this stuff, it's so reassuring to know that there is this thing called the MATLAB help browser. So I'm clicking on the home tab sheet of MATLAB, and then I'm looking for one of those little icons that has a circle with a question mark in it. And there it is. So when I uh, click on that, it launches MATLAB's help browser. And you know what, the, the user experience is very, very similar to that of driving, say, a, a web browser. All right? So we have this mechanism for allowing you to, to type in some keywords. So let's type in um, differentiation. All right, let's see how far that gets us. So we've typed in our keywords, we've got a bunch of hits. And if we look at sort of the first um, one or two hits, uh, differentiation, calculus, yep, look, I'm, I'm responding to those words. Let me, let me click on this and, and see what it, it sort of shows us. And here we found a help page that talks about, lo and behold, the diff function, which um, we've already sort of seen as being you know, the, the main mechanism for calculating derivatives of symbolic expressions. Now, this has sort of led us to, to um, you know, the, the library in MATLAB that allows us to do uh, symbolic computing. And that's this thing called the symbolic math toolbox. So let me kind of little uh, click on this link uh, here on the left hand side. And this brings us to, to, the, to the title page, uh, front page of the, the user's guide for the, for the math toolbox. And you've got to see, sort of see that at this level, it has two really important things. So thing number one is this section called getting started. All right? Everybody wants uh, that introductory sort of um, discussion on you know, the basics of, of, of driving something. All right? And here it is. And the other important thing on this landing page is the examples. 
everybody loves learning from examples and the symbolic math toolbox is, is packed full of examples for, for your students to sort of uh, learn from. So that in a nutshell is the MATLAB help browser, such an important tool for, for you and your students to be able to sort of leverage and lean on. All right, let's get back to, to our spring mass damper. Okay, so just summing, summing up what, what you've had a look at. What you've seen is examples of how MATLAB supports computational thinking. And although in this very, very small Hello World uh, example case study, the spring mass damper, we really didn't need to use these, these uh, tedium busting routines. In a moment, you will see that as we start to explore bigger systems, leveraging these tedium busters um, really is a big, big part in solving the problems and you know, b being able to spend more time thinking about the physics than doing hand computations.